Project IDI, one of the most memorable games of the FPS genre in the early 2000s. I remember playing it on my Pentium 3 processor with 128MB of RAM on a CRT monitor. Good days. Today we recreate Mission 1, the train yard of Project IGI. Together with the scene assembly, we will cover a unique five-stage lighting approach for dark scenes in Blender. In the mission, we infiltrate the enemy base to get onto a truck as an SAS commando. We clear this building, take the position on the water tower as a sniper, take out the enemy on the watchtower, and use the zip line to go to the other side. Let's start putting the scene together. The links for all the models are provided in the description. For starters, we select this building because the top of the building matches our reference a bit. However, this model is a bit higher than we need it to be. So, what do we do? We slash it down using booleans. Using box cutter, I will slice the lower part of the building. If you do not have box cutter, you can just place a cube and use a boolean modifier to the building. Either way, this gives us the height needed for our office building. Next, we place the water tower and a small cloth sim on top of it to just give it some movement. We then place the barracks according to our reference, the watch tower here and some containers over here. The trucks, although not in the reference, do provide a context to the mission and the story of our sequence, so we do make a point of adding them to our little world. Lastly, we fence the entire area according to the flow of the fence in the reference. Fence in the reference. The characters are just soldier characters from Mixamo, animated as walk cycle, idle, aiming and ziplining. Fairly straightforward. Let's now start lighting. We'll do it by a five-stage lighting process. When you start lighting something, think of what or who is the main character of the story and where you want the focus to go towards. Firstly, we identify the ambient light. Second, we identify the main character. Third, we complete the story of the main character. Fourthly, we light the foreground, midground and background. And finally, some practical lights. We start with the ambient light. This will be a night scene which means there is some amount of ambient moonlight that is wrapping everything. We do this by simply going into the world lighting, giving it a blue color and decreasing the strength to let's say 0.4. Now the next step is to identify the main character. Our clandestine operative David Jones is the main character on the water tower, so we'll start lighting from here. By and large, we'll use the backlight technique which I've talked about in one of the previous videos. What it essentially is, is placing the light at the back of the subject which gives it a heroic or cinematic look, so to say. Next, we complete the story of the character. From the water tower, he takes out the guard on the water tower. So we'll light the water tower using the same backlight technique. If we place the light here, it's still on the back but it gives a good shaft of light through these buildings. Next, we light the foreground, in this case with a simple area light shining from the top with a very low intensity because we do not want the focus to be on the foreground. The midground we've already taken care of as this light doubles as midground light as well. And for the background, we again put a backlight to light it up. Now admittedly, this light does take focus away from the midground where the action is happening, but it also wraps the entire scene in backlight. We have a creative decision to make which light to give more intensity to, the midground light or the background light. It's really up to you, but to me, the brighter backlight looked a bit better, so we stick to that. We'll now add in some practical lights. These are the lights that you see in the scene, like bulbs, LEDs, lamps, candles, etc. On the water tower, let's add a bright LED light to show that this is where the story starts. Next, we go to the water tower and add lights on these lamps. We add a spotlight to the spotlight of the tower. We add a point light inside the post here. To simulate bulbs on these barracks, we add point lights on the barracks where the bulbs should be. For practical lights on the office building, we add red light on all four corners as if the security cameras are operating. And for the sake of completion, yellow bulbs as point lights in the back and front. This gives a good yellow and blue contrast which we also refer to as cheat lighting scheme sometimes. We also have point lights to show the headlights of the truck and an emissive red plane for these red lights in the back. As last practical lights, we'll add helmet mounted lights on the soldiers' helmets. 
For this, we use a spotlight and apply a child of constraint to it. We select the armature as the target and select the head bone as the parent bone. Now wherever the head moves, the light moves with it. Finally, we add light from the side on the semisphere to add a gradient shadow to eliminate the flat look. This is the lighting process that I use to light up dark environments. Do let me know your suggestions so we can build up on this together. We'll set up one extra camera for the Dragunov scope that looks from the perspective of Jones. Just don't mind the scope going through the head at this time. We'll set the focal length to 140mm. With this all set up, we start the render. In compositing, we bring our render layer and color correct it to bring the focus from the bottom to the middle of the frame. For the background, we decrease the saturation, levels effect to lift up the darks a bit, and then a low vignette. For the sniper camera, we add a black feathered mask and a scope reticle, adding a blood splatter from when we take the shot. A lens flare to add in haze, and finally, a universal color correction to bind everything together. We now have our final composite. Let me know if you have further suggestions for this series. Like and subscribe if this was of value to you. We'll meet again. Farewell.